Hi guys, welcome to my channel and in this video I am going to show you about the changes made to our create port application. The changes that are made include the major modification of the interactions and the connectors. There are two types of connectors were included in this new feature, I mean in this new update and those were V and P type connectors and I just want to show you the potential of the newly designed connectors so let's get into our video and I am here just trying to create a p-type connector firstly for the low frequency applications that is in the 1 to 20 gigahertz and I am selecting the faces now for the creation of connector and seems like yeah I was able to create the yeah, I mean I was able to select the small face and select the type of type of the connector. I want to create a P type connector over here. So just click this button, create port, and you can see the connector being created in the user interface of the ANSYS HU faces. And here we're done with the cre creation of the connector. So we will now see the results obtained by using this connector in the simulation and I will try to demonstrate the potential in terms of these parameters because that's what bothering the users so much. As you can see this orange curve is obtained when the antenna is excited by a wave port the uh, standard report that we use regularly use in the simulations and this red curve is obtained by the discrete sweep frequencies and green curve is obtained by choosing the interpolating sweep frequencies when the antenna is excited by the SMP connector so you can see only a fraction of bandwidth has been reduced I mean about the reduction in the bandwidth is about 40 megahertz and you can see the reduction in a return loss also I mean the impedance matching too so we, this is what you will be actually getting when you prototype this antenna in the real world and test it using some VNA or other equipment because of the added inductance by these uh, what we call it, the core and the legs of this SM, SMA connector you are impedance matching is getting going to be effective and the dimensions for the creation of connector is fetched from a standard manufacturer's website and for the sake of the copyrights and other things we were not entitled to reveal the manufacturer's website but the results obtained from the using this connector are promising as I shown earlier in this video and we will now see the results when this connector is used for CST simulations. So let's quickly create the connector in CST2. Just first press this button, open project. It will display the active project name Patchery. And you will be needed to select the edges for the creation of a connector in the CST. So I am going to do it quickly. And first edge chain has been picked up, and this second edge chain, yeah, done with the selection of the edges. And now select the type of the connector you want to create it in CST, and click this button, create port. It will automatically create the connector in the CST. As you see in this way. As you see in this video, okay, I will show you again. Just very quickly write off from the extra list and delete these options and close this. Just save this again, and we'll now try to press this button again. So as you see, as now uh, the button has turned into red color as soon as you press this button from green to red. It indicates that the application is doing some process so you don't need to confuse whether the application is actually working or not 
if the button turns into it then the application will really try to create the connector for you if not it will show you the error messages in the message window created over here so the creation of the connector in CST is also completed so we will now compare the results to results here too since we connect time domain server has been used we don't have much options to compare as one one so we will be only left with two curves that is one would apply in in the case of viewport like the port used way like the port we use in the hfss and the green curve indicates the response obtained when the antenna is excited by the p-type connector that is created by the application the create port application the red curve indicates the response obtained by exciting the antenna by the wave port so you can see the variation is very very minimal and as you can see the frequency gap just 5.06 and it would be 5.09 i guess yeah 5. only it was about 30 megahertz reduction in the case of cst and the reduction in the return i mean in the reduction in the impedance matching is obvious for the reasons uh, I have told you earlier. Um, this is it for the creation of the p-type connector as you can see this is the connector that would be getting created and I will try to show you a bit more the internal structure as you can see this is the core and this is the sheet the outer layer of the SMA connector and this is the teflon the separation between the core and sheet for facilitating the wave propagation and that's it for the p-type connector so we will now quickly move on to the another yeah, another connector so for that just close this project close this and go on with this design As you see over here, this is the V-type connector that is going to be created by the app for you. And we will firstly we will see the creation of connection connector part firstly. Again, click this button to have the designs and choose the connector type. Confirm the project name from here. It was the same. So I will I have already created the faces. So I will press this button simply. So as you can see, the green button has turned into red, indicating that the application is running and doing the creation process for you in the HFSS GUI. So we will see the connector being created. As you can see, the colors are added to just to create the awareness that it has a PEC type and we will now see the results of time by doing so so I have simulated this model using the distributed computing features available in HFSS for those of you wondering what do you mean by distributed computing see our earlier video demonstrating the HPC capabilities in HFSS and CST, you will get an idea of it. And these are some of the results obtained from the full simulation. And I have this publication. Let's quickly show this for you. The original publication, I tried to implement it to demonstrate the potential of the application. like it got stuck the adobe application is not responding to my input i'll try to open it again oh, no. okay so i'll try to open it again yeah here you can see this is an i2 click application and i try to design this array antenna 
this is an 8 by 1 array antenna designed for millimeter wave applications and I will just show you the bandwidth obtained in the paper as you can see the demonstrated bandwidth in the paper is from 24 to 29 and the same has been obtained in the HFSS2 with a bit of changes in the peaks and troughs in the graph and the pattern to go directional and there isn't any change in the pattern magnitude too. In the publication they stated that they got an average gain of 10.5 dB. I got a maximum gain of 10.33 to here. And this is a gain versus frequency plot and here you can see a maximum of 10.6 dB. So I confirm the potential of this created a connector by the app by comparing these results with the obtained results in the publication and we will also see the same in case of CST simulation too. Firstly we will create the connector in CST. Just select the connector, click the open project to change the connection and just press this button. Now you can see the connector being getting created in the CST GUI and it will take a little bit of more time compared to HFSS and the type of interaction is very much different and since uh, there are some modular issues in the case of CST we avoided the usage of the helical grooving that I employed in HFSS so you can simply see a loaded ring in the place of the group and you can see the bottom view of the connector and the side view too this is the side view as you can see this connector is more or less a very a way more or less come very uh, close to a real actual wall connector except for the threading part that is around the screws and we will quickly see the results obtained in the case of CST2 we will see the S parameters you can see the bandwidth ranging from 24 to 29.2 gigahertz in CST2 so you can confirm this same and the radiation efficiencies linear so we got a radiation efficiency of more than 70 percentage and a peak radiation efficiency of 85 percentage and the gains to gain remain constant over a bandwidth of 2.2 gigahertz and the results as parameters you got a First resonance at the 25.2 gigahertz and the higher order resonance at the 27 to 29 gigahertz. Since these resonances are of higher order mode, we know the fact that the dipole antenna suffers from the really poor radiation efficiencies at higher order modes due to the higher impedances. Since the connector we created will be only having a 50 ohm, 50 ohm impedance, and the radiating element requires maybe 200 to 300 ohms which is quite higher compared to 50 ohms so this variation in the radiation efficiencies would be appear in the results and this is quite acceptable too because we need to compensate for those higher amount of impedances before designing a wideband antenna and yeah this is it for the and I can see yeah the application these are the changes that were made to the application they you can consider this as an update too and the user interface has also been changed a lot to make it attractive for the users and also reduce the creation of connected times too by eliminating the unnecessary code write-ups in the first initial version of the application so that's it for guys and if you have any queries do let us know through the comments.
section or through the groups we have provided in the description just ask anything you needed about these antennas or hpc simulations anything you have thanks for watching